With this workflow, you have your very own email agent that can draft messages for you, send those messages out, that can retrieve emails within your inbox, as well as label them with the correct labels, all in Gmail, all in one place. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at how this will actually work here. So I've got a message that I wanna send. So please send an email to Diana Carlton saying, hey, how's it going? So what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna come in and it's going to, first, it's going to go through this process of seeing if I've attached any files because maybe I wanna send an attachment. Uh, it's gonna see if I sent text or audio. I could have sent an audio message through Slack. It's then gonna find her email in my Google contacts down here. And if it does not find her email, it's going to throw an error saying it couldn't find the email, please provide it to me. But because Diana's my wife, it's gonna find her email. It's then going to, even though I said send an email, it's actually gonna draft an email first. If I come back to Slack, we got two replies. One saying that uh, it's gonna go ahead and do it, but here's our draft. All right, so, and I can hey, message, hey, how it's going. I can review and send it, or I can update it if I want. It gives me the draft ID, that draft ID, once I say go ahead and send is what it'll allow it to be able to find the message, the final message that I've asked it to send. So it'll send it properly and then it should delete it. So if we come over to my email and my drafts, let's refresh, there's the draft it generated, perfect. All right, we'll come back here and say, go ahead and send it. All right, and then what it's gonna do, it's gonna go through that same process again. I could have sent a voice message again, but it's gonna go through, it's gonna go through the send path. Now, real quick, this bot isn't just one bot. I'm actually gonna give you five bots today. So each of these execute workflow nodes is a different agent, and I'll go through them all in just a second with you. But be aware, it's gonna go ahead and send that email out. It's then going, to, it also has the ability to retrieve emails. So if I'd asked it to get me emails from Diana or from somebody else, it would have been pull, able to pull them. Um, if I had asked it to send an email to the trash, it would have been able to do that. Um, it can relabel them. And I'll, I'll talk about all of that and what you're able to do with it in just a second. All right, but quick, let's come back to Slack. Uh, here we got another message saying it went ahead and sent it, sent it to her. Hey, how it's going? Uh, let's come back to Gmail really quick. Here's my drafts, it's already gone. It already self-deleted the draft out. Here's my sent, quick hello. Hey, how it's going? It's exactly what I asked it to do. Absolutely perfect, I love this bot. All right, and as always, you're able to download this workflow for free from my free school community. Just click the link below. Or if you want the more advanced version of it, you gotta go to my advanced community because this is actually a part of my entire Roger 3.0 system that has this as just one tool, one of 31 workflows that work together as part of my executive system suite. So this here, right here, this front end is actually the Roger front end. I just go ahead and give it to you. It's part of all of my bots nowadays. So what it does is it's able to process Slack messages, either voice or audio messages, as well as accepting files. So you can attach files, you can attach Google Drive links, and it'll store those that file information so that you can then go ahead and attach it as a part of an email that you may send later. All right, so we go through that process. Um, it's able to have conversational memory with you by using Postgres. It's a kind of complicated process, but basically, if it's the top of a thread, it's not gonna pull any conversational history because there's no conversational history to pull. But if it's part of a thread, so like over here, that information is gonna be pulled as part of the system, and it's gonna be able to remember what you've conversed with it about, what it has said to you, what you've said to it. It passes all that information forward up to here, where it's gonna then go ahead and find the contact information of the people that you want to email. Now, I asked it to only email one person, However, you can ask it to email multiple people and it's gonna go through and it's gonna go through your Google contacts to be able to try to find each of those people. If it does not find all of them, it's gonna throw an error and it's gonna come back to you go, hey, I was able to find the emails for this person and that person, but not this one, or I found that person, but they have you know, multiple, there might be multiple different chases in your um, Google contact list. Which one did you want? Or I found the person, we didn't have an email. It's gonna give you some sort of error letting you know hey, you need to give me a little bit more information. So that's what this process is. It just sends you a quick message through Slack and then it updates the memory so that it has that memory context of what it's already conversed with you about. If it finds those emails, it goes through this process down here. It's gonna structure all of the information that it needs based on the tool that you're using. So either the drafting tool, the sending tool, the email retrieval tool, or the labeling tool. 
It's gonna structure that all together using this system prompt here. Uh, basically, it's just, it's gonna go through and it's gonna figure out what it is you're asking it to do and what information it needs to output. So in this case, it's either gonna output the word draft, send, retrieve, or label. That's it. It's gonna figure out which tool you're asking it to do based on the context of your message. It's gonna send it through a switch and then down the path. So either the drafting path, the sending path, the retrieval path, or the labeling path, all right? Each of these system prompts here, all it does is it's getting the information together in a form that the individual tools are gonna need because the drafting tool needs inf different information than the sending tool, different information than the retrieval tool. And so each of them, you're able to see in here what it is it's looking for, an action, email subject, email message, to recipient, get draft email, uh, email draft to delete, or list all drafts. And that's because there's different tools that each of these, you know, individual AI agents has. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you them really quick. So here's our email drafting tool. It's able to delete drafts, create drafts, get drafts, or get many drafts. And it's just hooked up to an open AI node. Um, so this email agent, all it does is it does the action. This one formulates a response to be able to send back to you. I'll show you the output parser real quick. It's gonna show you exactly what it did and how it did it. And because there's so many different tools, all it does is it picks the information that it needs to send you, sends it back to the email agent here, that's then gonna formulate a response to tell you exactly what happened with that tool. All right, so email drafting agent, here's our sending email agent. It's able to send emails to reply to sender only, reply with a CC, reply with a CC and BCC, oops, um, to get a draft by ID and to delete a draft by ID. And so when I went back to my email draft and we saw the draft was gone, it sent the email and then it deleted the draft because the draft ID was there, it found that draft and then it deleted that draft. AI agents are awesome, aren't they? Um, again, this email agent or this AI agent here, all it does is kind of structure the output to send back to the main agent to be able to send back to you via Slack. Here we have an email retrieval agent. This one is able to get emails based on label, to get them based on search to get them based on sender or to get them based on a date range. So it's it's all the same query that you would do right in Gmail. Now you can do it right in Slack. It's gonna be able to go get those emails for you. So all you have to say is, hey, can you get me um, the emails from Tom? Uh, you'll give the email address on you know for the past week. All right, and then same thing with this email agent here. It structures the output for you, sends it back to you via Slack. And then our final one is our labeling agent. Labeling agent, here we go. It's able to mark emails as unread. It's able to add labels to threads. It's able to trash emails, untrash emails, and remove labels from threads. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated. I give you an extra node over here. So in order to be able to label or unlabel emails, you actually have to know what the label ID is. And so I, that's not something I can just pre-program in for you. You're gonna have to be able to do this yourself. So I give you this node. If you run this node, it's gonna return all of the different labels that you have in your Gmail account. And so all you do is you find the one that you, you find all the ones that it might have to label it for, you copy them, you bring them back over to the email manager, and then you add it to this act on label task system prompt. So you're just gonna add in all of those various labels that it has, what it should correspond to. That way it knows which label IDs to be able to send to the email agent, the labeling agent, so that it can actually act on its on your behalf. All right, so that's kind of the most complicated step you're gonna have here. Either way, the, e the labeling agent then outputs kind of the same response. It's gonna tell you what it did, how it labeled it, you know, what, you know, which process it followed. It all goes back up to the uh, main email agent. It's gonna formulate the response to you and send it to you back via Slack. So this email manager is really cool. It allows you to handle all of your email tasks right within Slack, right within one place, and have that natural language conversation with it. So instead of having to go to Gmail and manually do any of this stuff, you just grab your phone, you push a button, tell it what you want. It might ask for some confirmation information, but you just go ahead and give it to it, and then it's able to take action on your behalf all in one place. I absolutely love this. It's a major part of my entire Roger 3.0 system. It's built right into the system in numerous different places so that it can take action on your behalf, on tasks, on anything you ask it to do. It's able to follow up on scheduling. And it's just so much more, so incredible. And that's available in my advanced community. I have a link down below so you can get that as well. And if you found this video helpful, 
please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video, because it really does help get this information out there. As always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.